In this video, we're going to talk about Kirchhoff's current law, abbreviated KCL. So the basic idea behind Kirchhoff's current law is that the total current that flows into a junction must equal the total current that flows out of the junction. So if we assign the current values that flow into a junction, let's say if we make it positive and the current that leaves the junction negative, then in that case, the sum of all of the individual currents must add up to zero if we assign it that way. So if we have 10 amps going into the junction and 10 amps coming out, if the positive 10 that's going in and if we add that to the negative 10 that's going out, it has to add up to zero. Now let's work out a basic example. So here's the junction. Let's say if we have 10 amps of current flowing in this direction and we have 4 amps of current flowing in that direction. Let's call this I1 and this is going to be I2. Now I1 is it equal to positive 10 amps or negative 10 amps? Because the current is flowing into the junction that's in this region this is going to be positive 10 amps. Now what about the 4 amp current, I2? Is it positive or negative? Now that current is leaving the junction, it's moving away from it. So this is going to be equal to negative 4 amps. So now let's come up with an expression that will help us to calculate I3. Now before we do so, take a guess. I3, is it flowing into the junction or is it flowing out of the junction? Now once we calculate I3, if it's equal to a positive value, then we know that the current is flowing into the junction. If I3 is equal to a negative value, that means that the current is flowing out of the junction. So we said that the sum of all the currents must add up to zero. So that means that I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to zero. Now I1 is positive 10, I2 is negative 4, so now let's calculate I3. So 10 minus 4 is 6, so if we move the 6 to the other side, I3 is equal to negative 6. So what this means is that the current is flowing away from the junction, it's going in this direction. So notice that the total current that enters the circuit, that's positive 10 amps, that's equal to the total current that leaves the circuit, which is negative 6 plus negative 4, which is negative 10 amps. So everything is balanced. Now let's consider another example. So let's say the current is still 10 amps in this direction and the current flowing in this branch let's say it's 14 amps and once again we're gonna call this I1 and I2 so go ahead and calculate I3 so first we need to determine if the currents are positive or negative so this current the 10 amp current is entering the junction so that's a positive current the 14 amp current is leaving the junction, so that's negative. So we can say that I1 plus I2 plus I3 adds up to 0. I1 is 10, I2 is negative 14, and now let's calculate I3. So 10 minus 14 is negative 4. Now we need to take this number, move it to that side, where it's going to be positive 4. So I3 is equal to positive 4 amps. Because it's equal to a positive value this time, the current is flowing into the junction. So now notice that the total current flowing into the junction is 10 amps plus 4 amps, or positive 14 amps. Now the total current coming out of the junction is negative 14 amps. And so if we sum up these values, the net current is zero. 
Now let's try a harder example. So here's the junction. Let's say we have a current flowing in this direction. Let's say that's 8 amps. And let's call it I1. And let's say we have a current of 9 amps flowing in this direction. And so we'll call that I2. And there's a current of 7 amps. And let's call this I3. So calculate I4. Calculate the magnitude of I4 and its direction. So feel free to pause the video. Go ahead and try this problem. So just like before, let's write a simple expression. Let's add up each current and set the sum equal to zero. I1, is it positive or is it negative? Now notice that the 8 amp current is leaving the junction. It's moving away from it. So therefore, we need to assign a negative value to it. Now, the 9 amp current, I2, is going towards the junction, so it's flowing into it. So this is going to be positive 9. And I3 also flows towards the junction, so that's positive 7. So I1 is negative 8. I2 is 9. I3 is positive 7. And now let's calculate I4. So negative 8 plus 9, that's positive 1. And 1 plus 7 is 8, so 8 plus I4 is equal to 0, which means I4 is equal to negative 8. So because it's negative, that means that this current is moving out from the junction or away from it, so it's going up. Now let's make sense of everything. So the total current that's flowing into the circuit that's plus 9 and plus 7, so that's a total of 16 amps. And the total current that's leaving a circuit, I'm going to highlight that in yellow, that's negative 8 and negative 8 here, so that's a current of negative 16. So the net current that flows in a junction is 0, which is what it's supposed to be. Now, for the sake of practice, let's try one more example. And so here's the junction. So let's say if we have a current of 12 amps flowing in this direction. So let's call that I1. And let's say a current of 8 amps flows away from the junction, so we'll call that I2. In this branch, we have I3 and I4. And let's say that we have a current of 20 amps flowing in that direction. Let's call this I5. And let's say that I4 is twice the value of I3 in magnitude. Not necessarily in direction, but in magnitude. It may or may not have the same direction. So with this information, actually, let's assume that it has the same direction. Let's keep it simple. So with this information, go ahead and calculate I3 and I4. So calculate the value of two missing currents. So first, let's write an equation. I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 and plus I5 must equal to 0. So I1 is positive because it's going into the junction. And I5 is also positive. I2 is negative. So I1 is 12, I2 is negative 8, we're going to leave I3 the way it is. Now I4, I'm going to replace it with 2I3. 
and I5 is positive 20. So let's add like terms. 12 minus 8 is 4, and 4 plus 20 is 24. And then 1I3 plus 2I3 is 3I3. So 3I3 is equal to negative 24. And so I3 is going to be negative 24 divided by 3, which is negative 8 amps. Now to calculate I4, it's simply going to be 2 times negative 8, which is negative 16 amps. So because the current is negative, that means that it's flowing away from the junction. Now let's compare the total current that flows in the circuit and the total current that flows out of the circuit. So the total current that flows in is going to be 12 plus 20, which is positive 32 amps. And the current that's flowing out of the circuit are the negative values. It's negative 16, negative 8, and negative 8. Negative 8 and negative 8 is negative 16. And if you add that negative 16 with this one, that will give you negative 32 amps. And so the net current flowing in the circuit is 0, which we should always get this answer. So that's a quick way to test to see if you have the right answers.